In the land of Uz, there lived a very wealthy man who loved God and was considered blameless. He was considered to be the greatest man on earth among the people of the East. His name was Job. One day in the heavenly realm, all the angels were gathered together and Satan was also there. God, <clears throat> God pointed out Job, showing how righteous and upright he is, a man who fears God and hates what is evil. Job only follows you because you protect him and bless him, Satan said. If you take away everything Job has, he will not follow you anymore and will curse you. Maybe he's just obeying you just to get what he wants. So God gave Satan permission <clears throat> to take away everything Job had, but Satan was not allowed to hurt Job. Satan sent enemies to steal Job's animals, caused Job's children to die in a freak accident. Job lost all his children and everything all in one day. It was devastating, but Job still followed God. Satan came to God again. He said, if Job gets sick, he will not praise you anymore and will surely curse you. So God again gave Satan permission to make Job sick. But God did not let Satan kill Job. And so Job became sick with sores all over his skin. Job's wife asked, do you still have faith in God? Curse God and die. Job replied, that's foolish. How can we accept good things from God and not trouble? And yet in all this, Job did not sin and still loved God. Thank you, Tita Abel. So let's all bow down our heads in prayer, Mona, okay? So, Father, um, we want to lift up tonight's study into your hands. Um, we ask for your anointing, for your presence, and uh, would you soften our hearts tonight that uh, it would absorb the lessons we could glean from the talk about Job. Uh, may we learn much. Um, speak to us, Lord, through your servants. Um, use me and Paul as your mouthpiece and um, grant us uh, understanding so our faith will be strengthened. And we ask all of these in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Okay. Tonight, uh, we'll be tackling one of the most difficult questions anyone has to face, much less talk about. No? And it's the reality of pain and suffering. And this reality is something that we cannot avoid. You cannot deny it. Because it's happening, happening all around us, even today as we speak. But I want to encourage you tonight. See, I know that there are some people here who are facing or have gone through loss and suffering and pain. No? Now, I cannot sit here and honestly say that I understand exactly how you felt. But I know that because of this, there's this temptation to turn away. There's this temptation to give up hope. There's this temptation to, to stop believing altogether. And I know it's, it's hard to be singing these songs that we are singing about, about God being able. He will never fail us. He is for us. He is not against us. Alam niyo Tapos bigla we go to grief, 
we go through pain, we go through illness, a very sick child, a very sick parent, to go through loss. And suddenly we are in a place where we go, God, where are you? I believe in those things. I sang about those things. I have proudly spoken about you to the world. And yet, why? Bakit naman ganun? And this leads to people asking honest questions. Questions like, if God is love, why does he allow suffering? Or if God is love, why is there even evil in this world? And I want to encourage our hearts today as we look into this subject and hear from his word. Because this subject of, of pain and suffering, it's not isolated to you. But alam niyo, one of the reasons that I know I can trust God with suffering is, is he does not shy away from it. Because nowhere is the problem of suffering taken more seriously than in the pages of the Bible. And tonight we will be looking at this guy named Job who probably experienced more pain and suffering than any other person in the Bible. Guys, the truth is this, no? Good people, bad people, we will all encounter suffering and pain. And when we, when we are in the middle of this, this suffering, the one thing that we want most is what? Relief. Tama? We just want the pain to end. We just want to know what to do. We just want to be reminded that God is not absent, that he is right there with us and fully in control. Even, not even, especially during difficult times. So over the next couple of weeks, we will be exploring the story of Job. And hopefully we will uncover why suffering exists and how, how to respond to it and gain a deeper understanding of the character and nature of God. Okay? So let's begin. Okay. So chapter 1, verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Now, the story begins with Job as the central figure, and he is immediately introduced as blameless and upright, uh, a person who feared God and turned away from evil. The first look at Job um, shows him to be a righteous man. Pero hindi siya perfect, ha? Um, not sinless, um, for all have sinned, di ba? Okay, parang si Noah din. Uh, but this tells us that Job had a complete devotion, um, respect, and obedience to God. And because he has this, then he had reverent fear of God and so turned away from whatever is evil. Now, to fear God is often misunderstood as uh, dread, uh, fright, or horror, or anything superstitious. Okay? It's not that. Okay, it's more about the genuine knowledge, um, admiration, uh, trust, and understanding you know, of God's holiness. Because if we don't have this genuine knowledge, then the tendency is we act against God. So the fear of God makes us turn away from what's evil. And this is what um, Job was being described to be. And he stood out among his peers in every respect that no one could justly charge Job with moral failure. So his reputation was flawless. Now, other versions of the Bible use the word uh, complete integrity. Okay, so integrity doesn't just happen in an instant. No, it's built consistently over time. And we see this in Job's character. Next, we, also, uh, we will also learn that Job was very rich. It said there, that there uh, were born to him seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys, 
and very many servants. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. Now, during Job's time, wealth okay, wasn't measured in terms of money or gold bars. No. It's measured through mga possessions. Uh, possessions of what? Mga livestock, um, servants, and also uh, by the number of children that they had. And Job had many of all these. So he had what? Seven sons and three daughters. Okay. Tapos 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, may oxen pa, and donkeys in hundreds. And kailangan mo talaga ng maraming servants to take care of all those, and even the household as well. So he had a great household and much business. So can you imagine that? No? Ito yung status symbol of wealth and greatness in that day. And much later in the book, we will also catch a glimpse of what Job actually did with his wealth and his time and energy. He rescued the needy. He cared personally for the handicap and the dying. Um, he was a champion for the wrong. And so the word greatest, Dito, is used to describe him. And this is important no, to point out. Because the fact that he was prosperous underscores his testimony in the trial to come. So if he had nothing to start with, then his loss would have been, you know, less long. But by being blessed with so much, uh, we can see the magnitude and unimaginable contrast to losing what he lost. And this makes his faith all the more amazing. <clears throat> so what have we learned so far? He's blameless, he's upright, uh, he fears God and is super rich. Now, another thing about Job, okay? He was a good father. Um, let me read uh, verses four to five, okay? His sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one on his day. And they would send and invite their three, do uh, three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of the feast had run their course, Job would send and consecrate them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus, Job did continually. So what do we learn about um, Job here? He was not only God honoring, but he was an amazing father and a powerful example for parents today. We see here that his family met regularly and they ate together. And this description shows that they have a happy and close relationship. He was a great family man and he was able to impart this to his sons no? because it was especially noted that they took care of their sisters as well. But the important thing I want to point out is this. It's found in verse 5, where it mentions that he would rise up early in the morning to offer burnt offerings for his children. During the Old Testament times, sacrifices are offered for the atonement of sins, um, which is usually done by the head of the family. And Job um, acted as the intercessor okay, for his household. So here we see how Job is very sensitive to sin and how, how as a father wanted to make sure that his children will be right with God at all times. And so he does this continually. And this is a beautiful example for us, um, mga parents, you know, because we are mostly preoccupied with the financial provisions that we could give or focus on their education or their emotions that we have the tendency to forget about the spiritual aspect of their lives. Now, all good parents should also be concerned you know, about the spiritual wel welfare of their children. And today, the way we make sure of that is by praying for them. Okay? We intercede for them. And just like Job, let's pray for our children continually. Okay. Moving on. Now, there was a day when the sons of God 
came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. The Lord said to Satan, From where have you come? Satan answered and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. Now suddenly, we see a glimpse in the spirit world into the very throne room of God, which Job had no idea what was happening in the background. Okay? So now there was a meeting going on. He said that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. In the Old, uh, Old Testament context, uh, these are angels, okay? and they are um, created beings. Okay? Then you have Satan. The word Satan literally means adversary. And I think it's a good name for him, right? No, um, the enemy of God. And so we see here that even Satan has to give an account to God. And that is what happened here. Okay, you see, Satan was himself an angelic being. And angels are part of God's creation, diba. Right? So we have to take note that he is in no way, okay, he's in no way equal to God. Okay, We often inflate Satan's status and importance. And this is to his great delight, you know, thinking of him as the opposite of God, as if, um, as if God were light and Satan were darkness. And yun ang gusto niya, okay? magiging opposite ni God. But sa totoo lang, he is in no way, okay? no way talaga, the opposite ni God. Hindi sila uh, magkatumbas in status. And that's why we see here that even he has to give an account to God. So Satan and the angels appeared before God, and the Lord said to Satan, From where have you come from? No? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From roaming about on the earth and walking around it. So, anong ginagawa niya? Okay? So let me tell you what Satan does and is still doing today. Okay? Let's look at 1 Peter, okay? Chapter 5, verses 8 to 9. Sabi dito, be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. So what does that mean? It means don't be complacent. No? Why? Sabi dito, because your adversary, okay, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. So you need to resist. No? Resist him, be firm in your faith. In other words, we learn from the book of Job the reality of the spirit world and also the reality of Satan. He is real and he is out there to devour believers. Um, he is out there to get us. So anyway, let's go back. Okay, verse 8. And the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. Okay. So, napansin nyo yun? God was the one to point out Job's faithfulness. God brought um, Job to Satan's attention. It's not the other way around. Here we have a man living uh, such a faithful life that the God of heaven points him out so, parang binibida niya, okay? Binibida niya si, ano, si Job. Because of all the men, Job was something different. Unlike many others who had given into the, um, into the trappings of the devil for the sake of money and prosperity, um, these people have compromises. And um, sabi dito, Job had actually turned, no? turned from evil. He avoided sin. And that's why back in verse 1, he was called uh, a man of complete integrity. Okay. Job 1, 9 to 11. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Job, does Job fear God for no reason? Have you not put the hedge around him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land. But stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. Nakita na yung 
philosophy and reasoning ni Satan dito. Sabi na Job loves and worship you because of one thing. Ano yun? Because of what you gave him. Because of what you can do for him. He does not really love you. He does not really care for you. In other words, Satan is describing a picture of many Christians today. You go to church. You attend Bible studies based on what you can get from God. I'm sorry, but that is shallow. It's called commercialism. It's a consumer mindset with God. It's called quid pro quo. I worship you, I follow you, and in return, you do this for me. You give this to me. And this is shallow. Satan in this regard is pretty accurate. There are many, many people who are self-centered. By nature, human beings are self-centered. These people, they don't, they don't really know God. They say they worship him, but actually they worship themselves. Because for them, God is somebody to be used. God is like a Santa Claus. I follow God because of what I can get from God. Pansin ninyo yung next part. Satan tells God, have you not made a hedge about him? The word hedge has an idea of a thick wall. Parang itong nasa picture. Sabi ni Satan, I cannot touch Job. I cannot touch his family. I cannot touch his business because you have been protecting him. Binakuran mo siya. Here we see the power of God and the limitations of Satan. Satan cannot act without God's permission. It's not even up for debate. So Satan said, without all these protections, Job will curse you. At anong sagot ni God? Verse 12. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not put forth your hand on him. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. So what do we learn here? Nothing can happen to us or our family without the permission of God. So even when he does permit Satan to act, his permission comes with limitations. Kaya sabi niya, don't put your hand on him. So despite Satan, despite everything, God is still in control. And that is my comfort. Okay? But the warning is, okay, Satan is real. And Satan is alive. And is always working you not know, to deceive us. In fact, the Bible explicitly warns us of this. Yeah? Tingnan niyo yung, ano, yung verse na to. And I think all of us are familiar with this verse, okay? Ephesians 4.26, it says that, Do not let the sun go down on your anger. But usually, okay, most of us, hindi natin na, uh, pinansin yung next verse. And what does it say? Next verse says, And do not give the devil an opportunity. Huwag mo siyang bigyan ng pagkakataon. For what? Okay? For what? To have a place in your life. So ano yung context nito? Anger. Your temper. Now a lot of people today are full of anger and bitterness. And they don't realize that by being angry and bitter, by not learning to forgive, they have actually allowed Satan not to come in and wreck their lives. And this can happen to you, and this can happen to me. Okay, so friends, okay, God is powerful, but He is also warning us to guard our lives. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. No? At anong ginawa niya? Ito, grabe. In one day, Satan got so busy oxen and donkeys attack stolen by sabians servant servants killed in other words satan can arouse people to attack god's people and that's exactly what happened ships and servants killed by fire and lightning what do we see here Sir, satan has even certain control over nature next camels taken by the chaldeans servants again killed Grabe, no? 
Notice all of this happened in one day. Na-imagine na yun? Biglang may kakatok. Boss, boss, boss. Kinuha mga baka at dangkin natin. Maya-maya may kakatok ulit. Boss, yung mga kambing natin tinamaan ng kidlat. Patay lahat. Tapos di pa umaalis. May isa na naman dumating. All our camels are taken. At habang nandyan pa sila lahat. And this is the most painful. Before the reports were finished, the Bible tells us somebody came and reported to him, Boss, a hurricane came from the desert at tinamaan yung bahay niyo. The house of your children. All of them died. Let me ask you a question. Answer me honestly. How would you feel? Put yourselves in the shoes of Job for one day. You don't even have time to process. You lost your fortune, you lost your family, you lost everything. How would you feel? You would say, would you say, parang gumuho na lahat yung buong mundo ko? Would you say, you are concerned that you probably may not even survive this event in your life? Yes or no? Do you know how Job responded? Job arose and tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground. And it's a picture of mourning. This is what they do in the Middle East when people mourn, when they are grieving, they shave their heads and they tore their robes. But something amazing happens. He fell to the ground and ano, he worshipped. How many of us when we encounter trials, when things are not going what you expect it to be, you turn away from God. You stop going to Bible studies. You stop worshiping. Some even stop believing in God. God, you did this. You allowed this bad thing to happen to me. Yeah, forget it. I'm cutting you off, God. God, kilala mo ako, matatag ako. I can take this. I can take that. But when you took my loving wife away, even when I begged you not to, you went too far, God. So that's it. We are done. Do you know what that sounds like? Saying to God, okay, God, you first. You first. If you give me enough, then I'm on board. Guys, we don't set the conditions for faith. He sets the conditions for faith. So we must believe in him on his terms, not on our terms. But unfortunately, some people stop believing in God because they don't understand this and they operate on their own terms. But for people like Job, it's different. Job worshipped. Kita na yun? Is that possible? You know, one of the greatest evidences for Christianity is how God's people respond to pain and suffering. The way they process pain and suffering is amazing. Bakit? Because their perspective is different. I've seen so many cases of Christians with cancer where you go to, to comfort these people, but instead you come out being the one comforted. Because they know God for who he is. In the case of Job, he worshipped. Look at his understanding of God. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. By the way, how many of you were born na meron ng damit? Meron ba? You were born naked, and you will die bringing nothing. So para kay Job, my family, my blessings, everything is from God. The fact that God gave me so this many years with my own children and the possessions that were entrusted to me. Praise God! Friends, perspective. Job's perspective is different. And that's why the message today is so, so crucial. So what is he saying? <laughs> Everything that I have is from God. No, life itself is from God. Because here is the real truth. Okay? Bad 
evil people will have problems. Good, godly people will also have problems. Yes or no? The only dilemma is this. Okay? When we see bad people have problems, we think that they deserve it. But when good people have problems, we are shocked. Oh, you know, how can this happen? And that's where a lot of people begin to lose their faith. Because in their eyes, they don't see fairness. They don't see justice. And they question, how can this be fair? They ask this without realizing the very question of fairness and justice proves that God exists. Because if God didn't exist, why do you even bother about fairness and justice? So if you are just a product of evolution and there is no God, then there is no such thing as morality and good and evil. Tama ba? Yes. An atheist loves this question, no? If God exists, why is there so much evil in the world? Narinig niyo na ba yung tanong na yun? Lagi kong naririnig yun. And let's address that for a minute. Well, if evil is real, and it's not just a concept in your mind, if evil is truly something to be avoided and is morally wrong, there's no way to sustain that thought without a moral being who is the creator of the universe. Ano ibig ko sabihin? When, when you, you see, when you assume that there's such a thing as evil, then you assume that there's such a thing as good. Tama ba? Pero if you assume that there's a, such a thing as good, then you are also assuming there's such a thing as a moral law. Okay? On which is the basis for us to differentiate between good and evil. Following? But if you assume there's such a thing as a moral law, you have to assume that there's such a thing as a moral giver. But that's what people who refuse to believe in God are trying to disprove, not prove. Because, because if there's no moral law giver, then there's no moral law. If there's no moral law, there's no good. And if there's no good, there's no evil. Then what becomes of their question? Next time somebody tells you, I cannot believe in God because there's so much evil, yan yung sagot nyo. Okay? It doesn't matter who you are, sooner or later, you will have pain and suffering. No exceptions. And the only difference is this. How do you process and respond to it? Okay? When Satan told God, Job will curse you pag wala sa kanya mga ito, ano yung response ni Job? The Lord gave, you know, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Through all this, Job you know, did not sin, nor did he blame God. And this is amazing. With everything he went through, he kept on following the Lord. But si Satan, he's frustrated. Okay? So ayon yung magpatalo. You know, sabi ni God, um, sabi ni God sa kanya, look. You caused him harm, but he is still following me and fears me. No? So what did Satan say? Skin for skin. No? Yes, all that a man has, he will give for his life. However, put forth your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. Ano? <laughs> ano sinabi niya? Okay, God. Kanina... Sabi mo, wag ko siyang galawin. Okay? Allow me that, and I guarantee you, he will curse you. You see, Satan's theory is very simple. Huh? Nobody will really worship you unless they get something. Ladies, let me ask you. Okay? Let me ask you. Can you imagine this? No? A boy is courting you. Or let's say, uh, mga parents. Okay? Parents, imagine this. Someone is courting your daughter, and all because your daughter is rich and beautiful. Yun ang reason 
okay, why he is courting her. Now, this guy, okay, as he was about to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage, he finds out two things. One, that when they get married, you won't give them money. Two, for some medical reason, this girl cannot have physical intimacy with him. In other words, this guy will not get anything, no, materially or sexually, but only pure love. And then the boyfriend says, no na, ayoko na. And suddenly, he disappears. So parents, ladies, how would you feel? The moment a guy discovers he cannot get anything from you, he disappears. What kind of guy is this? May kwenta ba? Politicians and powerful people experience this all the time. No? When they are in power, they have many friends. But the moment they are no longer in power, you know, these people, they disappear. And Satan is saying we are exactly like these people. And the question you need to ask yourself is this. Are you? Tama ba siya? Satan is saying we come to God because he can do something for us. But the moment we have problems and God doesn't do as we please, or as we want him to do, we disappear. So what did the Lord say to Satan? Behold, he is in your power. Only spare his life. Then Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Then he put a pop shirt, pot shirt to scrape himself while he was sitting among the ashes. So once again, we see that Satan's power is limited to what God allows. And he again went to work immediately. And this time, he had stricken Job with boils. Pigsa na may nana. No? Yikes. Friends, what will you do if you were Job? Will you be miserable? For me, it's unimaginable. Dati nagkapigsa ako, isa lang, umiiyak na ako. From head to toe? Hindi ko ma-imagine. And yet, Job did not curse God. So Satan was desperate. Alam niyo ano ginawa niya? Do you know what the Bible tells us? Satan, while he could not make Job curse God, he was successful in talking to Job's wife. In one last cruel blow, Job lost the love and support of his wife as well. After Job lost everything, that one last comfort of his life is the love and encouragement of, of, and faithfulness of his wife. Alam niyo ba what Mrs. Job did? Ano sabi ni Mrs. Job? Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. In Tagalog, ano ba to? Why are you still believing in God? Magpakamatay ka na lang. Imagine the last thing, the last person you can depend on and she tells you magpakamatay ka na lang. Guys, I want you to understand this. This is Satan's ploy. He will use your family. He will use people to become his mouthpiece. What a sinister, evil mind to do such a thing. Because that's the way he attacks you. Hindi lang siya external. Most of the time, he attacks you by the, by the, the way you think about God. Natandaan niyo yung lie with Adam and Eve? Did God really say? Throughout all of this and throughout history, Satan has one agenda and one agenda only to destroy your faith. In the same way, God has only one agenda too. It's not to make you rich or comfortable in this life. No. His only agenda is to restore you to him and to save you from hell. When the reality of pain and suffering is staring, staring at you in the face, that's when the temptation of Satan gets very, very real. Why do you keep believing in God and serving God? Why do you keep trusting in God? 
You see, yan yung problema na marami sa atin when we face suffering, when we are no longer questioning whether God exists or not, but what kind of God do we believe in? We begin to question the very character of God. What kind of God do we have? And this is Satan's temptation. Look at the next, next verse. I'm amazed about how, how, how Job answered his wife. Sabi na, you speak as one of the few foolish women speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God and not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Amazing. So my question is this. What kept Job going? Let's see what he says in chapter 13. Though he slay me, I will hope him in him. Nevertheless, I will argue my ways before him. Wow. Even if all I have and everything I hold dear in this world is taken from me, I will still hope in him. I will still trust in him. I will still believe in him and rest in him. Even if I have nothing, I still lack nothing because I still have him and I shall not want. This is why the Bible tells us, look at the faith of Job. Though he slay me, I will hope. I will persevere. I will keep waiting upon him. But he said, I will argue my ways before him. You see, Job's greatest problem is not denying God. His greatest problem is, I do not know why. And isn't that the question what many of us have? Why am I suffering? Because, spoiler alert, Job never found out. Itong conversation between Satan and God, hindi naman niya alam yun eh. Kaya na sinasabi, I am bothered. I want to talk to God because I want to know why. Let me share with you a quote from theologian Edgar Godspeed. Goodspeed. Sabi na, in the end, Job's problem is left unsolved. Except that in the infinite wisdom of God, undeserved suffering must have an explanation beyond our comprehension. This is, after all, the simple doctrine of faith which does not insist upon explaining everything. We live in a time in a culture where everything has to have closure. We've got to have closure. Let's go to counseling so we can get closure. About my mom's death, about my brother's death, of what, why I got sick, bakit iniwan ako ng asawa ko, bakit ako iniwan ng yaya ko. Alam niyo yun? It's all about closure. And this is telling us faith does not need closure to continue on. Because the simple doctrine of faith does not insist upon explaining everything. But it's hard, di ba? It's one of the biggest hurdles many of us is this thought. If God has good reasons for, for allowing suffering, we should expect to know what those reasons are. We should. And that's what most of us feel when we are in pain. Tama ba? But really, why do you think that? Naisip niyo ba yun? Are you as smart as God? Alam ko, ako hindi. Araw-araw pinapaalala ng asawa ko sa akin yan. If you take your dog to the vet and he has to experience a very painful needle your dog will never understand why it's that, that's the case kahit iupo mo pa siya sa tabi and itry mo pa i-explain sa kanya bakit importante na ma-inject siya para hindi siya magkasakit do you think he will understand? no and that's not because of some lack of ability on your part to explain it's not because you're not a good enough communicator. Your dog simply isn't the sort of being who can understand why you do some of the things that you do. And you can make the same analogy between parents and, and the decisions that they make and their young children and their inability to understand the decisions of their parents. 
Nakikita niyo analogy? My ways are higher than my dog's ways. Why then should we be surprised if sometimes God's ways are higher than our ways? Given how big God is and how small we are, realize that you can trust God without even knowing why you are in pain. Alam niyo bakit? We trust God because our faith is not on our circumstances. It is in who God is. What does the Bible tell us about faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the evidence of, of things not seen. I mean, if you have to understand exactly every detail how God created the world in order to believe in God, sinasabi ko na sa inyo ngayon, you are not going to believe in God. Because God himself tells us that by faith, we understand that the things are, that are were created from the things not seen. In other words, God is telling us, I'm not going to explain to you how I did this. Because this one is going to be by faith. Alam niyo, isa sa mga paborito kong panuorin sa YouTube is yung mga, mga archaeologic, ar archaeological accounts about ancient times. Alam niyo yun? about the flood, about, you know, just data and information that confirms and a lot of things in the Bible. Because it's very encouraging and I find it so, so fascinating. But these, these are not the things that actually make me believe or not believe. I believe because the word of God tells me the things that I should believe. Today, we have to realize that not everything happens to us has to have an explanation. But not having an explanation does not mean that God is not in control. At yan si Job. His faith is amazing. And he is able to endure because even though he does not understand what's happening to him, he knows that there's a bigger picture. Imagine. Imagine lang ha. Stay with me on this. If aliens somehow manage to tap into the video feed from Earth and all they could see is the hospital room where you were being born, okay? And they watch as the doctors forcefully told your mom to do things that made her scream in pain. And, when, and then when she could take no more, they got out the knife and cut right into her stomach at nilabas ka nila with blood everywhere. And even when your mom was reaching out for you and screaming for you, they immediately rush you away from her. Ano tingin mo isipin ng aliens? Ano tingin mo isipin nila dun sa mga doktor? If all they saw were the first few moments of your life, they would think that the doctors were pure evil. Tama ba? Because only from a fuller perspective would they, would they be able to see that the doctors actually cared for your mother extremely well. In fact, they saved both you and your mom's life. In the Christian understanding of reality, what we see today is only the first few moments in life. Literally, the birthing process of our existence. Itong red part na to. And after that, we still have all this never-ending part, which is our eternity. If we trust in Christ, the vast majority of our existence will be spent without death, mourning, crying, or pain. Look at what Job said, and this is the most important verse in the book. For I know that my Redeemer lives. Tingnan niyo to. Kasi I find this very interesting. Sino, sino ang Redeemer? Jesus. And as early as this book of Job, remember kanina, I'm telling you how old this book is. As early as this, he already knows of a Savior that is coming to redeem. 
And at the last, he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. Job believed in the resurrection of God's people. He knows that someday he will see God face to face. And that is the ultimate, ultimate reward for faith. Even if my skin is destroyed, kahit ano pa mangyari sa akin. That faith that allowed Job to see the big picture enabled him to endure. He doesn't understand what's happening. He wants to understand. Pero it doesn't matter. Kasi he knows enough to trust God, whatever the circumstance. Okay, let's end with this. There was once an article about safety at sea. And it claims that when a, sh when a ship sinks, women are more likely to die than men. And that sparked a long online discussion on why this must be the case. No? And th there was this woman named Kirsten whose comment was striking. Sabi na, I am not surprised. Women with children have the least ch chance of survival. I would rather die with my child than leave my child to die if I could save myself. Imagine being on a sinking ship with a young child stuck in a compartment that is slowly being filled with water. And while you can drop down into that compartment from where you are, there's no way to get back out. This child is slowly going to die there. And this child, this little girl, is distraught. She is suffering. She is scared. Imagine a parent who lowers himself or herself into that compartment, knowing that it will mean their death too, in order to be with the child in her suffering, to comfort her, to ensure that she will not die alone. I would rather die with my child than to leave my child to die even if I could save myself. Is that a stupid thing to do? Not if you have a child. Sa mga may anak dito, when you look at them and hold them, you begin to understand. It may seem such a crazy thing, thing to do, this sacrifice, but not for the people you cherish the most. Sometimes when we feel pain, how quickly we are to blame God. The same God who, when he suffered at our hands, the first words out of his mouth were, were, were Father, forgive them. A loving parent is not the one who never allows suffering in a child's life. The loving parent is the one who is willing to suffer alongside the child. The loving parent is the one who is willing to make a personal sacrifice to do whatever it takes, even my own life, if that's what it means to see a child through suffering. Why? Because that's what a loving parent does. A loving parent does not let a child suffer alone. A loving parent steps down and takes onto himself all the pain and all the grief and all the fear and all the shame and all the guilt so that we can be completely free of it. A parent cannot always fully explain their goodness to a child, but a parent can display their goodness to our child. And Jesus is the only God who came down and displayed his love in such an extravagant way. Only in Jesus Christ do we have a God who loves us enough to suffer with us. They ridiculed Jesus while he was on the cross. Yet he saved others even though he can save himself. 
with the heart of a parent, Jesus responded, I would rather die with my children than leave my children to die so I could save myself. Jesus' ultimate reason for suffering and dying on the cross was to save us from our sin and to take our just and deserved punishment unto himself so we could be free. The night before Jesus died, as he wrestled with what the next day would bring, he said to his friends, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. I think this is one of the most amazing verses in all of scripture. The God of the universe, the creator of all things, saying that his heart is sorrowful even to the point of death. If you've ever experienced pain and suffering, if you've ever experienced deep depression and anxiety, if you've ever thought about suicide, no matter what it is that you've been through, there is no depth of agony or helplessness that we can go through in life that Jesus doesn't understand. Ironically, it may be the famous atheist Friedrich Nietzsche who said it best. Sabi niya, the gods justify human life by living it in themselves. The only satisfactory response to the problem of suffering ever invented. He's actually talking about the ancient Greek gods, Dito. And remarkably, he never makes the connection to Christianity. But the connection is very, very clear. At the cross, we see the absolute uniqueness of the Christian's response to suffering. In Islam, even entertaining the idea of God's suffering is a disgrace. It is taught to make God weak. In Buddhism, to reach divinity, to move beyond the possibility of suffering is to detach yourself from anything or anyone that could cause you suffering. Contrast that to Jesus Christ, who did everything he could possibly could to attach himself to us, to our suffering, and to see, to see us through it, and therefore, we can trust him. And we can trust him when he says that there will be a time where there will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, because he will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There's one detail dito that I want you to notice. It doesn't just say that there won't be any tears anymore. It says that God himself will literally wipe every tear from our eyes. The solution to the problem of suffering is ultimately not a theory, or a philosophy, or a mindset, it is ultimately a person, a person in a relationship, a relationship that is on the table for every one of us here today, and to every single person that we hold dear. Some people think the problem of suffering should push us away from God. Para sa akin, it's precisely because I feel the problem of suffering so severely that I'm led to trust the only God who promises that he will personally do something about it. Each one of us is going to have to deal with significant suffering in our lives. It may not be to the extent of Job, what he went through, but one day, each of us is going to have to deal with the reality of death. That could be many years from now. But it could also be choking on a piece of food at lunch tomorrow. When suffering comes, who will bear it with us? Who will see us through it? Jesus will. If we ask him to, he won't force himself on us. He won't force himself into our lives. 
But if we invite him, then we will never be alone in our suffering. And we can know that we will spend eternity in a place where suffering will be no more. Before time, God chose us in his desire for love. In time, God loves us so much that he suffers with us. And in the end of time, God will set things right. Amen? Amen. 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 streams of abundance flow blessed be your name and blessed be your name when i'm found in the desert place though i walk through the wilderness blessed be your name every blessing you pour out of Turn back to praise And when the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name I'll say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name to say Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be your glory 